Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Have you been working on your prepper pantry and you want to make sure that you have enough protein in your food varieties? We can't always have the meat we want or maybe we choose not to eat meat. So how can we have a stockpile of protein in non-meat foods? There are a wide variety of foods that have protein in them and we know that the human body needs between 60 to 90 grams of protein every day. So the first thing you want to do is start reading the labels. If you look down on the label, it has the grams of protein in them. Then you also need to pay attention to the serving size because some things like rice, it may say that the serving size is one fourth cup when in reality, most of us eat a half a cup of cooked rice and so then you're getting double that amount of protein. You also need to look carefully when you choose small packages of snack foods because a lot of those have protein in them. And once again, we tend to grab a small bag. We think it's one serving, but it's not. Some of them are two and a half, three, four, even five servings in what we would consider, sorry, one serving because that's my little bag. And then you have that amount of servings times the protein grams is how many grams you're actually getting. Just as we pay attention to the calorie count, you need to pay attention to the grams of protein and you may find out that you're getting more than you thought. Having enough is a concern and so let's go over some of the foods and look at the grams of protein that you can find in a wide variety of foods. Some of these may be foods you want to add to your prepper pantry, your long-term food storage, and most of these can last for several years, up to 30 years. A lot of it depends on the oil content of the food and how well that you store it. The more airtight, cool, dark, and dry that you store foods, the longer it's going to last. But things that have a high oil content like brown rice are just not going to last. They're loaded with protein, but you need to rotate those through your prepper pantry far faster than you would something like white rice, which can last for 30 years or even more. Always a great place to start with your food storage is with rice. White rice is going to last indefinitely as long as you store it in a cool, dry, dark, airtight container. Brown rice doesn't last as long because there's a lot of oil naturally in the rice grains. So you want to rotate your brown rice far more frequently than you do your white rice. Both of these, it says serving size one quarter cup, but most of us actually eat a half a cup of rice. But in the one quarter cup, there are three grams of protein, whether you choose white rice or brown rice. Here's a good example why you don't want to store the rice just in the great big bags it comes in. This one already has a hole in it and it took me a while to figure out where's the hole. Little rice grains are flying all over the kitchen. So not only does that make a mess, but it's a waste of your food and food that's not stored airtight begins to spoil. That's a quick fix for now, but I need to make sure that I store this in an airtight container. Beans and legumes are loaded with protein. They're a great way to get some protein naturally. Whether you buy beans in a can, there's all different varieties. Most of them have about seven grams of protein per serving. You can buy them dried. Green split peas have eight grams of protein per serving. And lentils have nine grams of protein per serving. Choose varieties of baked beans that you know you like because these also have seven grams of protein per serving. Even look at varieties like black-eyed peas. Black-eyed peas have five grams of protein per serving. It's nice to store canned beans because they're easy to open and eat if you're in a hurry or you have a power outage or no way to cook the dried beans. But it's also important that you have dried beans put away in airtight containers because they can last for up to 30 years where your cans of beans need to be rotated every few years. Grains are a great source of protein. Oatmeal has 5 grams of protein per serving. Quinoa has 6 grams of protein per serving. And couscous has 7 grams of protein per serving. Then you can look for little packets of things like granola bites these are great to put in something like your bug out bag because they have a year or more shelf life on them. And if you read on the back, it has two grams of protein per serving. However, this package has 2.5 servings. 
Look over your pastas, macaronis, egg noodles, and you'll find that pastas have 7 grams of protein, egg noodles have 8 grams of protein, whole grain pastas also have 8 grams of protein per serving. And if you're anything like my family, a platter of spaghetti, you don't normally have what they consider one serving, you're probably going to have more. I don't normally eat the minute or instant rices, but I have them on hand for emergencies. And interestingly, the white rice has three grams of protein per serving, but the brown rice has four. Other quick foods you might have in your prepper pantry might include Idahoan instant potatoes, which have three grams of protein per serving. Jiffy corn muffin has four grams per serving, but once you mix it up according to the directions, it has seven grams per serving. The Annie's organic macaroni and cheese has seven grams of protein per serving. Some other easy to grab and prepare foods are like the Kraft Spaghetti Classic box. This has seven grams of protein and nine grams once it's prepared. And surprisingly, the Knorr sides, the teriyaki noodles, have 16 grams of protein and 16 grams once you prepare it. And the creamy pesto also has 16 grams of protein the way it's packaged and if you prepare it there's 20 grams of protein in this package. Then if you look through some of your whole grain crackers you'll find that some of those have protein. The Triscuits, six crackers have three grams of protein. A lot of the crackers don't seem to have any because they're so processed, but look over some of your crackers and maybe make better choices with the foods that you want to add to your stockpile. If you look at the dairy products, there's an interesting variety of what you can find. If you look for the whole milk, like Parmalat, it has 8 grams of protein per serving, as does the Nido Fortificata. This is the greatest powdered milk. You can find it even at Walmart or you can order it from Amazon. It's not very expensive. It's very easy to stir into water. It doesn't clump up and it actually is tasty. It's the only kind of powdered milk that I actually buy anymore. I used to buy Augustin Farms Morning Moo, but it became unavailable and extremely expensive. And the Nido Fortificata is a wonderful addition to my food storage. Maybe you want to consider getting some high protein powder or some of the pre-made shakes. They would be great to go in your bug out bag or grab and go if you like that type of food and they have 16 grams of protein per serving. What's interesting about cheese is how different the protein amounts are. If you look at the Augustin Farms dried cheese it has five grams of protein per serving and it's pretty tasty. You can make a lot of things with it from cheese sauces, make your own macaroni and cheese as long as you have a big bag of macaroni. But then the media crema, which is actually table cream, actually has zero protein. I was surprised that cream had zero protein. The grated cheeses have two grams. And interestingly, a new product that I found recently is Wisps. They're completely 100% cheese. They have a shelf life of about two years, a year and a half, two years. They're lightweight. They have two servings per container of 10 grams of protein. So these little packets, which would be great in your bug out bag, or they're just delicious as a snack, there's 20 grams of protein in this little resealable pack of cheese. Nuts have a nice amount of protein. You can get almonds with 5 grams of protein. The pistachios have 6 grams of protein per serving. Peanut butter has 7 grams of protein per serving. And once again, one of these little nut packs. It's an energy blend. It has peanuts, honey roasted sesame sticks, almonds, walnuts, and pecans, which has 5 grams of protein per serving. Now it does say it has servings, about 3 servings per container. And I guess it's new math because 3 times 5 used to equal 15, but there's 13 grams in the entire package. Snack packs like this are great for your bug out bag, grab and go, and easy meals just to have in your pantry in case there's a power outage or you need a snack in a hurry. Food storage is more than beans and rice. We need to pay attention to the calorie count. We need to pay attention to the protein amount. And we need to have variety in the foods that we store. Think about serving breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. 
and having a variety of foods that you can grab and go, maybe having your bug out bag to fill your prepper pantry stockpile so that you can make meals, have enough food on hand for easy meals for three months if you can, and then stockpile the long-term food storage, the dried foods that can last for decades. You can do it a little at a time. No one has been able to do all of it in one fell swoop. There's not enough room in your budget or probably in your pantry. If you just add a little at a time and you keep adding to your stash, add a variety, rotate those foods, learn to cook them. And if you see something you think you might like, just buy one, bring it home and make that one. If you like it, go back and get more. Then you haven't wasted your food dollars on foods that no one cares to eat. It's important that we provide the foods that we need for ourselves and our family because the future is uncertain. Nobody really knows what could happen. It could be anything from you get sick to who knew we were going to have a pandemic. And there's always going to be weather related and natural events that can cause a disruption in our daily life. Food storage is lifestyle insurance. Make sure that you're providing the things that your family needs so you can continue to enjoy the day to day life as it comes along. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else who might enjoy it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.